When it comes to your sexual health, take it from someone who's been there before. Take it from me. Today, Mackenzie talks to Nicole about mending broken boundaries. My grandpa does everything for my grandma, and so I had very high expectations for love and relationships. And I'd been in some pretty messed up relationships. Um, I'd been in a very abusive one. The relationship was going really well at first. I was like, oh, this is the man I'm gonna marry. But then when it came time to go back to college, there was like a party going on one time and all of these girls were like trying to come up and hug him and he'd kind of like shut himself off and like okay. look at me real quick and I was like, you can hug your friends, that's right, fine. That's I normal. don't, I didn't connect the dots until the next day when I found bobby pins that weren't mine in his room mm. and I was like, wow, he is cheating on me. I didn't realize that I needed out of the relationship until I was visiting him one time. He was playing video games and he got so mad he broke a window in his apartment. He didn't want to pay the that charge. Mm -hmm. He took a piece of the glass and slit his forehead and told the apartment owner that he had fallen head first into the window and that's how it broke. And I was like, what? no, if you're okay with mutilating yourself, Psycho. what would you do to me? Absolutely. So when I, I went home, I was like, no, we're done. This is um, not gonna work. Yeah, I guess. This is not gonna work. <laughs> no, thank work. you. Yeah, no um, thanks. I did this all over text because I knew if I called him again, he'd be able to talk me out of it. And he called me and I wasn't answering yeah. and I was listening to the voicemails and he was sobbing yeah. saying, yeah. I'm so sorry, like, I'm not, I, I won't cheat on you ever again. You know, the semester ends, he moves back home, and like I said, he lived a mile down the road from me. <clears throat> and he would show up at my house, random times, mm -hmm. during the night, like never during the day. It got to a point where I'm like, you need to stop coming to my house, you are not welcome yeah. here, I don't want you on my property. Then, when that wasn't working, he would text me constantly. I had to block his phone number. So then he started texting me off his brother's phone. I had to block that number. I had to block him on Facebook. I had to block him on Instagram. He would get texting apps, text me off of those. Oh I would block those. Eventually my mom um, and my stepdad, they had to come over to my house and then we called the cops together. Yeah. And so the cop came out to my house and we did all of the, you know, no contact. And the cop called him off of my phone saying, I'm informing you personally, you're no longer allowed to contact this woman. It, it just made me feel so worthless and like yeah. a piece of property yeah. that he felt he owned yep. more than a person that deserved respect. Do you think that like affected your relationship and why you stayed in it yes. as long as you did? Because yes. I think that that Absolutely. affected mine. I'm like, we're disagreeing, but we can work it through. Because that's what you know my grandparents that's did. What my that's, parents do. Yeah. You don't know what is where the line is exactly because you're always told if it's the person you're meant to be with, you will find a way to make it work. You'll figure it out. I was raised in the Midwest in a family where my parents were had been married and went to college and were really religious and we were supposed to grow up a certain way. And when I started dating, that's not how it went at all. I started acting and modeling, and I met this guy in an acting class when I was 17, and he wrote me poetry, and I was super artsy, and I was like, aw, you know. So oh, of that's what initially hooked me. Um, I was attending college the next year after we met. I'm a really big Winnie the Pooh fan, so he would leave uh, Winnie the Pooh stuff and like flowers and stuff on my car. But again, I didn't park in the same place so it took me a while mm -hmm. to figure out he's stalking me. But I think yeah. by that point, we'd already been dating for like a year. And he was my first everything, my first sexual experience, my first every kind of experience mm. that you can have as a young woman. Um, he took me out on some dates. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, this is nice. But then in retrospect, everything was to manipulate and control, like putting the flowers and the Winnie the Pooh and stuff. And he was really strategic. And I didn't understand any of that. I thought I was in love with him and I moved in with him. He wouldn't give me a key, then it, he just turned into a completely different person, mm -hmm. which honestly, it was probably the, he was probably always that person. I just mm -hmm. didn't see it. Um, but then it got real, real when I had been gone from home for like two weeks. I didn't have a phone. I'm really close to my family. So I'm at the pay phone and I am in tears like, what is going, like, what is happening? This is not what I thought, you know, living with my boyfriend was gonna be like. She was just like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but you're going through this. So it was like, I don't know, a three minute conversation because I ran a change and I'm like, you know, I love you. And she's like, I'm thinking about you and it's gonna get better. Mm -hmm. And then I turn around 
to walk home and he's right there in the car, but he worked in Burbank at the time. So I start walking towards the apartment and he starts accusing me of being with some man. So I go to try to get into the door. He like stops the car in the middle of the street, jumps out, runs in the house and locks the door. I sat on that curb for seven hours. He would not let me in. And then about like 10 o'clock that night, he comes out, he just opens the door, but he doesn't say anything. So I just pushed past him. He tried to offer me food. I went like this to the plate. And then in my mind, I was like, ooh, why did I do that? Is this bad? Am I gonna, but I just was out, I was out of sorts. I didn't know really how to respond. Uh, the next morning, he said he was going to get breakfast. The whole time he was gone, I was looking for a knife. I'm just like, what the hell, man? Like, what? This is so not me. This is bad. But how do I get out of it? Yeah. So he comes home. It's Saturday. He pulls a gun out. Never seen a gun ever, except on TV. So he puts it in my lap. And I remember it being like really heavy. He starts crying. And he's just like, if, if I can't be with you and I can't make you happy, then nobody can. Then he's like, shoot me, shoot me. And I just started running. I just good, ran. Good, I just good. ran. So. Well, I'm really happy that you got out of it. Yeah. And that you knew to run at that moment. Oh my gosh, that is so scary. I know a big part of what I've learned and I've gotten better at now, I'm not married or in a relationship now, mm. but I'm better moving forward, is if I feel that something is happening or is being done that I don't like it, I speak up immediately. Good. Before I would Good. wait. Mm -hmm. If I felt like, oh, this is makes me uncomfortable, I'm not sure. I would swallow it, which is a messed up way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, but then the flip side of that is that I've had to also learn to reel in is I think sometimes I flip out unnecessarily <laughs> because of the trauma, yeah. it's a trauma response. I'm Absolutely. like, what, you're doing that? Oh, I'm, I'm gone. It's like, yeah. wait, was that really necessary for you to like cuss him completely out or hang up on him or, you know, and mm -hmm. he didn't, he doesn't understand. Like just try to explain it to him. Like, I apologize. I have some traumas that I'm still trying to work through. What you said triggered that, and I think that was my response. That's what you got. Yeah. I'm not usually like that all the time, but mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some stuff. I'm working through it. That's where I'm at now. Is like trying to find that happy medium and balance of having boundaries, setting boundaries for myself, speaking up when I feel like I need to, but not overly doing it. Listening to him too, because mm -hmm. he's probably got you know some oh, yeah, they have their own history trauma too. responses as well. So am I listening to him, or I'm just like me, me, me? I'm her. Yeah. I'm the victim. I'm this, mm -hmm. but not listening, because that's not gonna get us anywhere either. I didn't date for years, because I I didn't know what would have been considered abuse. Right. So right. I think now it's definitely forced me to really pay attention to what's going on, and it's made me really aware of myself and like what I do in a relationship. It's helped me find my flaws. Like I've got depression and anxiety, so I can get very agitated mm -hmm. very quickly. Really quickly and it wasn't until I found the man I'm with now that I'm like I don't want to do that to him that's right. not fair to it's him not fair. because these guys are doing it to me right. and I was so unhappy so I actually right. it it inspired me to you know get on medication for it and control it because he he doesn't deserve that no. going through what I did I would die if I ever made anybody feel the way that I felt and so it's definitely helped me work on myself quite a bit. Right. It was rough for a little bit, but I'm really happy that I went through it. As weird as that sounds, like, oh, yeah. I'm so happy. But now but you I can am. compare like, what you have yeah, now to exactly. And it makes the, the good times so much better. Right. Because I've had such lows that now I know, I know I'm being treated like a queen. I know that this is what love is supposed to feel right. like. I don't have to question it anymore. Right. And that's such a relief. For more trusted sources on the topics that matter to you, go to getmegiddy.com.